In game development, it is important for us to have goals to keep us on track and continually working towards something, especially on longer term projects. However, if you set your goal poorly, you're setting yourself up for failure. Now, I wanna help you set yourself up for success, so that's why in today's video, I'm gonna be talking about why the goals you're setting right now are bad, how to actually set better goals, and then at the end of the video, I'm gonna give you a little bit of insight into what some of my personal goals are. So the points I'm gonna be talking about today are going to be told through a game development lens, but these main concepts also apply to many different areas of your life. And with this video, I'd like to help you set and achieve better goals. So after you watch this video and you learn how to set some of these better goals, I'd like to learn what some of these goals are. So let me know down in the comment section below, what are the goals that you are trying to achieve? Scratch that. What are the goals you are going to achieve? Also, if you do enjoy today's video, I'd really appreciate if you hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for lots more awesome content on game development. It's actually gonna help me with some of my goals, which we're gonna be talking about later in this video. All right, so first up, I'm gonna talk about why the goals that you're setting are bad. So I say this because a lot of the goals that we tend to create are goals based off of outcomes. You know, we wanna set a goal of our game, get this number of downloads, or we make this amount of money in sales, or we get to this number of Twitter followers. Now these are bad goals because they're based off of outcome and we don't have any direct impact on these outcomes. Sure, there are things that we can do to influence those outcomes and we're of course going to be talking about that later. And I don't like to think of these outcomes as actual goals. They're more of aspirations or desires. You know, of course there are things we want and there are things that can drive us to do things like make games and make YouTube videos and all these kinds of things and they're great to have, but we should stop considering these as goals. The one that's a little bit of a gray area for me is when it comes to making goals based off of time. So like you say, you know, I wanna finish my game by the end of the year, or I wanna release this by my birthday or whatever. Now it's a little bit of a gray area because you sort of do have influence on how much effort you put into your work and you can finish it by that you know, desired end goal. Um, but the thing with timing for me is, I don't know if you've ever heard of Parkinson's Law, and it states that work expands so as to fill the time for its completion. So basically what that means is if you, you know, create a, an idea for an awesome game, and then you set the deadline of it to be one week from now, then you're gonna make that game in a week. Now, if you set your deadline for that same exact game for, say, a year from now, it's gonna take you that full year to create the game. Now, given the quality of the game that you make over the course of a year, it's probably gonna be a lot higher and there's gonna be more content than as opposed to just that one week game. But basically, however much time you give for yourself is however much time the project is going to take. You know, if you give yourself a year, you're not gonna just finish the project in three months and then just call it done. No, you're gonna take up that full year to work on your project, and chances are you're gonna be running up towards the deadline even after that one year, and you're gonna to wanna to push that deadline out further and further. So this is why I don't think goals of timing are necessarily the best either. So now let's talk a little bit about what are some good goals. So good goals are things that you actually have input on. So you could say, you know, the number of hours worked or the number of repetitions of some certain thing done. So to give an example for games, let's say you're working on a game as a side project and maybe you give yourself a quota of, you know, you say you want to work on your game for 10 hours every single week. So this is a good goal because you have immediate feedback every single week, whether you made success on your goal or whether you failed your goal. And as long as you hit that 10 hours every week, then you get a win every single week. And so that's going to give you motivation to keep going and continue that that 10 hours every single week. Now for goals of repetition, let's say you're an artist and you're, it's your goal to create one new character every single week. So again, if you set this up as your goal, then you're gonna do whatever it takes to just create this one character every single week, no matter how good it is, no matter if you don't sell this character to anyone or it's never used or anything like that, your goal is to create the character. That is something that you can do and you have direct input over. So let's talk a little bit about how to actually set some of these better goals. Now, like I was saying before, you don't wanna throw away those aspirations and desires. I think those are definitely awesome things to keep and hang on to and always have something to work towards. They're good to have as a motive to remind you of why you're doing what you're doing. Now, you wanna take kind of those end goals and desires and aspirations and figure out what are the things that you need to do to not guarantee you the results, because of course, results are never guaranteed, but what is everything that you can do to stack the deck in your favor as much as humanly possible 
in order for it to be extremely likely that you'll actually achieve those end results that you want. If you're having trouble figuring this out, one thing that you might wanna do is find some other people who have achieved similar of those desired outcomes that you have and look into all the things that they did to get themselves to that one point. And if even possible, maybe reach out to them, have a conversation with them and ask them about some of the questions of some challenges that you're facing right now and get an idea about some of the roadblocks that you might hit as you continue along this path. Now, I'm not saying copy exactly what they did. You know, what worked for one person isn't necessarily gonna work for another person, but it's definitely a good starting point. So by now you might have a better understanding of kind of the broad path to get from where you are right now to your end result. So you might have some kind of more tangible goals of things that you can actually achieve. Now, once you have those, you need to break those down even further into specific tasks that you can do you know, daily, weekly, monthly, that will bring you closer and closer to those kind of intermediate goals so then you can eventually get to that desired outcome that you want. All right, so let me give you an example from game development. So let's say that you have a desired outcome to make $1,000 off of a video game that you made. And so to keep this simple, you might come up with two goals. Of course, one, you have to make a game. Number two, you have to market a game. So let's start to break these down. So let's start with finishing a game. So first you kind of need to figure out about how long is it going to take you to finish your game. Now, if you don't really have a whole lot of experience with game development and you really don't know how long it's going to take you, you know, just picking a guess, guesstimate, just any number is as good as any. For me personally, I say the bare minimum for a commercial game should be about 100 hours of game development time. And that's definitely on the low end. I think a lot of people might even say it's going to be more like 1,000 hours of game development time. Um, but for me personally, I'd say 100 bare minimum. I've definitely made games in 100 hours and have been able to sell them for you know a couple dollars here and there. So now let's do the math on this. So let's say if we need 100 hours to complete our game, and again, we're just kind of doing this on the side, so maybe we can do about two hours of work per day. That means that's gonna take us about 50 working days to finish our game. Now let's say we're just gonna work about you know 10 hours a week, so this is, this is five work days, so we have you know, a quota of 10 hours. This is gonna take us a total of 10 weeks to create our game. And so this is why you'll see me kind of recommend a lot of times for if you're making your first game, you should kind of budget about three to four months for development time. Now again, if you budget yourself for two hours every day, you know, every day that you actually sit down and do the work for two hours, then you get an immediate win right there. And if you budget for about two hours a day for five days a week, then that kind of gives you some flexibility where if you're not able to work as much on one day, then maybe you spend a couple extra hours over the weekend to work some more on your game. So then you can actually get to that quota of 10 hours per week. So again, working two hours a day, this is something that you directly have control over. You can sit down for two hours every single day and work on your game. And if you do, then that is a victory. You've achieved your goal for the day. So now let's talk a little bit about marketing your game. So again, we're gonna do some math here. So like I said, our aspiration was to make $1,000 for your game. Now, if you're selling it on Steam, they're gonna take a 30% cut of that. So it's actually gonna be more like $1,430 is what you're need, going to need to make in sales in order to get $1,000 in profit. So let's say you're selling your game for $10. So that means you're gonna to need to sell 143 copies of your game. And so what this really comes down to is maybe you determine that you need to create a core market and core fan base for your game and that's who you're going to sell your game to and just as an example let's say maybe you're trying to build up a following on twitter and that's kind of where like your main core audience the people who are going to be most wanting your game are going to be so you need to figure out of that core audience of all the people who are super excited about your game how many people are actually going to purchase the game so if you're saying it's about five percent of your twitter followers then you're gonna need about 3,000 followers in order to make those 143 sales. Now, if it's a, bit, a little bit on the lower end, if you're at 1%, now you're gonna need actually closer to 15,000 Twitter followers in order to make that 143 sales. And so again, we kind of get to a little bit of an outcome here. So if our desired outcome is to have somewhere between 3,000 and 15,000 Twitter followers, then what are the direct things that we can do to influence our follower count to go up to those numbers. So of course, one thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is create some sort of posting strategy. So how often are you going to be posting about your game? You know, what are you gonna be posting about your game? Are you posting just screenshots and GIFs? Are you gonna be posting it on other places online? And really, you just need to keep doing this over and over and over again, and then over time, you're gonna find that you're gonna get more and more traction. So again, just think about the things that you can do every day, week, or month to help influence you to get to that desired result. All right, now then, as promised, I am gonna share with you some of my goals 
So I'm basically going to be framing this as what are a couple of my aspirations and what are going to be some of the goals that I'm gonna be doing to actually get me to those desired end results. And these are some things that I've wanted to achieve for quite a long time and I have been working towards them. I think I've been making some really good progress, especially as of lately. So the first aspiration I have is to actually get a freelance or contract job where I'm making something in the Unity game engine. And even if this is something that I only do one time and maybe I even have, end up having a bad experience with it and I just never end up doing any more contract work again after that, I think it's going to be incredibly valuable for me to go through that process so I can help you all maybe land some contract jobs in the future and just can talk about my process of finding that contract job and what it was like working there and so on. So a couple of the goals that I am working towards related to that that's going to help me achieve that desired result uh, for one is going to be to continue to provide value here on YouTube. I think it's just a good idea for me to kind of build up my own personal brand and you know provide some good tutorial content and just kind of show how it can be valuable to someone else's company. But also another specific goal related to this is to update my resume and portfolio. It's been kind of a while since I've touched that and I've done quite a number of things since the last time I've um, kind of updated those things. So that's definitely an achievable goal for me that I could probably finish within this month just by going in and updating it and making it look all nice and maybe even seeking some professional help and seeing what they think of all that. And speaking of professional help, I do want to reach out to some other people who have actually gone through this process and just kind of talk to them to kind of get a better idea of how to actually get started in this and some tips about, you know, once I get up and going th with this and maybe some possible pitfalls to avoid. And then the last goal that I can actually have influence over is to actually apply to some of these contract jobs that are available on some different job posting sites. So just really putting myself out there and letting people know that I'm available for hire. So the next aspiration I have is to get to 20,000 YouTube subscribers by the end of the year. So when I started my YouTube channel, I had a total of two subscribers and pretty early on, I don't remember exactly when it was, but I came up with this you know, aspiration, this desire to 10x my subscriber base every single year. So actually at the end of that first year, I got up to a total of 20 subscribers, a little over 20 subscribers. And then the year after that, I ended the year with about 200 subscribers. And then in the following year, I was able to grow my YouTube channel to over 2000 subscribers. So for continuing the trend, then this is the year where I need to make it to 20,000 subscribers. And where I'm sitting at right now, I'm a little over 6,000 subscribers. So about four months left in the year. And I think there's a ton of cool things that I can do and partnerships that I can make um, in order to get myself to that 20,000 subscriber desire that I have. So right now my current goal is to make two videos per week. One of them is more of a tutorial focused video and then the other one is more of kind of an informational video like this one where I'm just directly talking to the camera and providing some value this way. And so I wanna continue doing that and create some other videos on you know popular and related topics that I think will do pretty well. Another thing that I wanna do is do one kind of collaboration video per month. So a couple months back, I did a live stream with Charles from Infallible Code, and that was just a ton of fun where we kinda of hung out together and chatted about game development for a while. And from that I actually got a decent number of subscribers. And so I think it would be a good idea for me to do more of those live streams and not just, you know, so I can get more subscribers, but to actually build relationships with these other people and we can kind of like learn more about game development. And I think it really just kind of elevates the whole community. Oh, and by the way, if you do have any specific creators in mind that you would like me to collaborate with, um, definitely let me know who those are down in the comment section below. Now for my personal aspiration, one thing that I really want to do is win a jujitsu tournament. I've competed in several jiu-jitsu tournaments now and I've done pretty decently in a couple of them. I have a couple silver medals, a couple bronze medals, however, no gold medals. So that is certainly an aspiration of mine is to get a gold medal in a jiu-jitsu tournament. So what are some of the goals that I can do? Um, number one, I have to eliminate COVID because it's kind of hard to train jujitsu when you're staying six feet apart from each other. And so, I mean, I guess there's, you know, little things that you can do with that, you know, wear your mask when you're in public, social distance, yada, yada, yada. But of course, right now, a couple things that I still can do, I can still do rigorous exercise by myself, you know, keep my cardio up, continue to work out as often as possible. So then when we do get back to being able to train jujitsu, then I'm gonna be, you know, much stronger and in better shape than I was before. Also, I can watch YouTube videos and kind of practice these small little steps for different jujitsu moves. Um, which is definitely something that I do not do as much as I should. And then when we finally get back in the swing of things, I'm gonna be training about three to four times a week, which is what I was doing before 
um, but then you know everything happened and I went from chanting three to four times a week to zero times per week. So anyways, those are what some of my aspirations and goals are. Again, I would love to hear what some of your aspirations and goals are, so feel free to share those down in the comments section below. Once again, if you did find today's video helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you hit that like button. Also feel free to subscribe to the channel for lots more videos on game development. Anyways, I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.